Kongsi Fa Chai, it is our first Market Matters show just after the long weekend. Four days, four days of being comatose and eating yourself silly. <laughs> yeah, you, you had a good yeah, yi sang and, and tossing. By well, way. yes, I, we, I think everybody's pretty much wished for the same thing, basically. More bonus, more... You know, more security, big, more, more, more health. So yeah, yes. I think a lot of wishes are overlapping this year. But yes, it was. Uh, it's been a very long weekend, and uh, traffic yesterday was appalling, actually. Right. Uh, but it was a. It, I hope everybody who got home has got safe because I think a lot of people are traveling later because it's a. Uh, you know, it's also school holidays. school holidays. How was your weekend? No, my weekend was quite good actually. You know, so um, I mean, spending in, in in KL and it was very which is very quiet. quiet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I drove by Mid Valley on on Saturday and. It's a mid-valley version of being completely quiet because there were no cars going in, although the right. parking lot was quite full. But talking about right. quiet, I think the market's still in holiday mood. Can you really blame them? Yes. Uh, it's very, very dry today. Uh, volumes are massively thin. Everybody is still away. Uh, 18 points down, about 1.09% to uh, 1644. This is uh, no surprise because regionally it was uh, that as well. Japan market uh, entered bear territory. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dow Jones had a really, really bad slide for a couple of days. So I think it's just in lack of local leads, external factors are going to be continuing to uh, you know, point the direction. Yes, correct. Talking about other factors that is weighing the market sentiment is the Brent crude oil oil. And although it gains 2.4% for Brent to 31 US dollar per barrel, the WTL is still uh, falling short at 28.57 US dollar per barrel. Anyway, MRDF research today yeah. has a, a take on the oil price. They're saying that the persistent low oil price could actually um, you know, impact the economy. But it should nevertheless be contained because from the analysts saying from the, in the first half of this year, it's going to be averaging at 35 US dollar per barrel and it will continue to rise to 45 US dollar per barrel in the second half of this year. Let's see whether or not that actually comes true because people are so varied on what they think oil is going to be. You have the doomsday players basically mm. saying, look, it's not over, it's not going to be that easy. And what does that mean for some place like Malaysia where, of course, right now, everybody are filling in their slips for the EPF recalibration and whether yeah. or not they will actually take a cut. Just before we wrap up, of course, we talked about Japan. Uh, China, of course, is still on holiday. Japan market actually was really, really bad, entered bear territory. William Pasek actually Actually, the notice mm. economist in, in Japan, what I got expert, he has a fantastic reason about why Japan Inc. and Abe economics in general does not work out, but he's been very critical of Abe anyway, mm. so it's interesting to read. Nikkei 225 is down 2.31% to 372 points at 15713. Let's see how this goes because after Kuroda's thing, I don't know what else he can pull out of his arsenal. Mm -hmm. Moving on to what actually moved today, and there were quite there were a few, few rotational plays. We're looking at Zcon, Zcon and up an impressive 8.22% to 79 cents. Yeah, and during the entire trading, it was actually up nearly 10% today. But the stock has been rising sharply by 40% since yes. end November last year. Now, this is a very interesting company, Nadia. It's one of those Sarawak Link company, very well connected and controlled by the managing director, Datuk Zainal Abidin Ahmad, who has a 53% stake. And what does the news front say today on these Well, company? JF Apex, and we were talking about this a bit earlier, talks about how Zikon should be on your watch list because it was picked as unit Perumahan Penjawa Awak 1 Malaysia, or PPA1M, if you want to be short about it. 760.78 uh, <coughs> million uh, housing project in Kuching. I think why JF Apex also picked it up was because, let's not forget, these guys, well, it was a report that came out saying that these guys lost their quote-unquote cash cow. Yes, correct. And, and the fact is, you know, they were also controlling the toll uh, concessions in, in Sarawak. Were, yes. Yeah, were they, they being were. the operative word. Correct. And, and so it's a very lucrative concession, Nadia. Yeah, 33 years of, you know, uh, cash, uh, cash coming into your coffers with an optional extension of 19 years. But then again, this was all quashed, you know, thanks to the Sarawak Chief Minister, Tan Sri Adnan Satem, who said that there will be no toll in Sarawak. Exactly. So... Um, they will actually meet a bit later to kind of, uh, because they when you do stuff like this, you can't just tell them that it, it, it can't work, especially if it's a listed company, you need some kind of clarity. They will meet to have what they sign a total uh, you know, termination agreement. So in the meantime, I think without that that kind of buffer cash, Zcon is trying to find other things. The PPA, what do you call it? The PPA1M is one good thing for them. Right. Uh, because affordable housing, is that, I mean, being a property bear, isn't property uh, affordable housing the only thing you take comfort in? Yes, I, I mean, you know, definitely. I think, uh, I mean, if you look at this PPA1M, right, it's actually for the civil servants and it is um, priced between 150000 to 300000 and the square feet is actually quite good, 1,000 square feet and 1,500 square feet. You know, it, the gross floor area is very large for those who wanted to, yeah, uh, exactly. you know, uh, have the house. So UTM space was another thing that they had actually signed an MOU with. Of course, MOU is 
basically just going to see your bride rather than making sure you'll marry your bride, especially since your bride can apparently do a lot of things because this one, it, because of course UTM, it's, it's tied with education. There might be education consultation, research development and commercialization, human capital training. Maybe they're looking for like almost the technical part of the college. Correct. You know, because you, when you talk about human capital training and development, like how Tanaga does with their, with their university as well. In, in terms of, and let's not forget Petronas with their UTP. But exactly. earnings wise, so, yeah. they are still in the doldrum, uh, making losses of 2.3 million in the first quarter of financial year 2016, while revenue was up slightly, by, or rather, Where, yeah, 30%. Up, they did. But the margins, I think, are going to continue to uh, put them. And that's what we took away from this issue the fact that Zcon went up almost 10% today because JF, uh, because JF Apex did say that they would be having. Well, they'll be worth a watch because of this uh, whole affordable housing thing. However, earnings still look in the doldrums and we'll see whether or not they can come out of this thing about losing their toll concessionaire.